Um, so, I'm here today really to talk about myself, my experiences, and most importantly, technology and how it's made a difference in my life, hence the title, Hear No, See, see No, Techno. So, first of all, I'll start off talking about my story. Um, so, I'm actually registered deafblind due to a ge genetic condition called Usher syndrome. It's actually the most common form of deafblindness, um, and there are three types of Usher syndrome. I have Usher syndrome type 2, which happens to be the most common form. And what Usher syndrome is, is where you're born deaf, and then normally during adolescence, the blindness kicks in. Now, the blindness is recognised as pigmentosa, which is actually a really common form of progressive blindness. So, RP and deafness put together is Usher syndrome. So, um, by the time I was uh, age 12, I was diagnosed with Usher syndrome. I was only partially sighted at this point. Within two years, I went from being partially sighted to severely sight impaired, which is politically correct for blind, at the age of 14. Um, so within, and then two years after that, I was a guide dog owner, hence Eunice down here. Um, so that's really the basics of my condition. So as you can imagine, there's a lot of add-ons to deaf blindness. So not only am I deaf blind, there's also the coping strategies and actually having to come, come to terms with the fact that I'm losing my sight as well as being hearing impaired. Um, so the first struggle, I'd say early on, back when I was 12, was the communication. Uh, so if you're born deaf, you are extremely visual. Everything is visual. I, I had lots of speech therapy, and every way I learned to speak was through my eyes. I was searching for the visual cues. I was watching people's lips, gestures. Everything was visual. So as soon as my sight started to go, that was the largest struggle. Um, I actually had to transition from using my sight to using my residual hearing, which was definitely the hardest thing. And then, of course, mobility. <clears throat> Having been, say, a young deaf child who could skip around the playground with all my friends, I suddenly couldn't do that anymore, or I couldn't do that safely. Um, I couldn't leave the house by myself. I was given a cane when I was 15. Um, however, I, I refused to use it. I was purely in denial, really. Um, but I had to recognise that I needed the help and accept the help. Um, so that's when, obviously, having Eunice was a start, but it was also accepting that I needed that help. And then all of this, as the years went on, would lead into depression. Um, so I would often be stranded in my own home. I didn't want to leave the house. I felt that I couldn't cope with it or I didn't want to be seen by anybody. And this, of course, leads to isolation, which I know a lot of people su suffer from. And being isolated is just never fun, especially when you're, you're disabled and you, you really don't want to admit it. Um, and of course, when I do, did leave the house, it was feeling anxious, feeling so, so anxious of what's going on around me, what everyone thought of what, 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 what I was going through as well. Um, so it's definitely a struggle, all these components. And of course, the lack of awareness. Um, so none of my peers or my teachers had heard of Usher syndrome. Um, there was also incredible amounts of ignorance. Um, oh, you can't be blind, you're looking straight at me. How can you be blind? Or you don't sound deaf, you sound great. Um, so it was constantly having to battle through the stereotypes and having to explain myself all the time, which was exhausting. So what did I do? I turned to technology. So really, right from the beginning, I have had technology in my life. So I've been fortunate enough to have hearing aids. I was fortunate enough to live in a day and age where these actually exist. Um, so I started off having analog hearing aids. That was what was available. Um, and then at the age of nine, I was given my first pair of digital hearing aids. And I remember this day so well. It was the day I heard birds and the day I heard leaves crunching under my feet. It was definitely amazing. I remember being that child. It was just so fascinated by all these new sounds around me. And then 18 months ago, I was given a brand new pair of hearing aids, Link Squared um, hearing aids, which were made by GN Hearing. 
Um, and these gave me even more than what I've ever had before. So now at the age of 22, I can localise sound. So before with my other hearing aids, I could always hear sound, um, but I could never know where they were coming from. I was often searching for the sound with my limited sight, which was exhausting. However, with these hearing aids, I can pick up where sounds are coming from, and that's just a massive thing. Also with these hearing aids, they come with an app. Um, so on my phone and my watch and everything else, I can adjust my treble, bass, volume, and all the rest of it, which is something really, really cool. So all of this gives me access to sound, which is hugely enabling. There's no way I could do what I do now without the access to sound, especially now that I've got such limited sight. So along with that, of course, there's smartphone, which I know everyone's got these days, but without the iPhone, iPad and MacBook, there's no way I would have been able to get my GCSEs or my A-levels. Um, these were, a hu they, hu they played a huge part in my accessibility during my studies. Um, without, without having all my materials on my iPad where I can manually zoom in or have it read it to me, I really, really wouldn't have been able to pass anything without them. And then, of course, the Apple Watch I just touched on. I'll talk a bit more about the Apple Watch in a moment. Um, but with these hearing aids also, I should um, mention that the connectivity with these hearing aids also, because of the app, um, there's this Bluetooth connectivity directly from the hearing aids to the iPhone and the Apple Watch. And these are the first hearing aids that do that. Um, so really being able to answer the phone from my watch instead of getting my phone out and having the phone call stream to my ears directly enables that clear speech, um, which I've never had before. So all of this enables, uh, of course, sound and uh, independence, but also safety and confidence. So having that confidence to be able to actually leave the house and feel that I can do daily activities with my tools is amazing. So you may stop to think at this point in the next couple of slides that what I talk about can also benefit other people. Um, I often say I can empathise with the older generation because as we all get older, your ears start to fail, your eyes start to fail, mobility is slightly restrained. I often say I can, I can relate to that. I've kind of jumped the curve a bit. Um, at 22, you know, I'm already there. Um, so I often talk for a lot more people than a lot of people realise, not just for people like myself with Usher syndrome. <clears throat> so the Apple Watch, so I really got the Apple Watch purely out of curiosity to see really what this could do for a person like me who relies on technology for accessibility features. And I was, I was amazed, everyone was amazed. The, um, the, the main thing I would say is through the connectivity with my hearing aids, you know, it's important that I have the connectivity because I'm able to hear directly. So say maps, for example, I can navigate through cities with the instructions being directly streamed to my ears and then the prominent haptics. So it vibrates on my wrist when it's left or right and it's speaking to me. Um, so I can do that independently with my guide dog and feel safe. Know that knowing that I can get from A to B through the use of vibrations on my wrist is amazing. So also, um, as time has gone on, there have been several more enabling apps that have come around. One that I will talk about is Ring. Now, Ring really inspires the safety at home. And what Ring is, is a doorbell that goes on your door, and it's connected to an app that goes on a smartphone or iPhone, in my case. And I have, an app, and obviously, my Apple Watch also. So Ring, what it does, when there's a motion or someone ringing at the doorbell, it sends prominent haptics to my wrist. So through vibrations, I know someone's at my door. I can then go onto my phone, and there's a camera. Or I can view who's at my door from my phone. So with this, I can zoom in using the built-in accessibility on my Apple product, zoom in, um, I can also speak into it and hear directly through to my hearing aids who is at my door. And that's massive. I feel so much more secure being in my own home. And for a lot of people, you might think, oh, that's not that much of a big deal. Um, but you can imagine being deafblind, answering the front door is quite a daunting experience. So having this definitely gives you that bit of insecurity, uh, security even, not insecurity. Um, <clears throat> So I, I keep repeating myself, but this importance of hearing aid connectivity, there's lots of hearing aids out there, but not all of them have that connectivity, which is so important. There's so much technology out there that's available for the blind community, so for people that use their ears. But as you can imagine, it's inaccessible for the deaf blind. And so what I found since having these hearing aids, that I do actually, in fact, have access to all 
So all of these things that are made accessible to the blind, because I have that direct connectivity to my hearing aids, before I never had that. So there, there is definitely a lot of technology now that can compensate that bit more for my, for my blindness. And um, it will never be completely compensating. But the fact that we do have this technology out there that can do pretty good. So the additional bonus is that I can now access lots of things made accessible to the blind alone. An interesting project I was involved in was this, you may not have heard of it, um, but Wayfinder. And I was the first and only deafblind person to trial this. Now, Wayfinder is basically, there's a series of beacons underground in London that is connected to an app that is available to everyone on iPhone or smartphone. And it will speak to a blind person and give you clear instructions as to how to get from A to B on the tube. So it will give you uh, descriptive instructions. So for instance, how many steps are in front of you, which gate you need to go to for assistance, etc., etc. So this, again, may not seem that big to you, but for, for blind and deafblind people, mobility is a major issue. And be, being able to actually feel you can leave your house and navigate independently really does enable more. Um, so employment, for example, is definitely even more, even more of a bigger possibility for many people. And having that independence inspires safety. So feeling safe. I, I know when I trialled it, my whole demeanour changed. I went from feeling really anxious and stressed about Eunice and who was treading on Eunice to actually feeling really relaxed in my own skin and knowing that I was getting from one place to the next safely and without any stress at all. And that was just huge. I've never, I've never felt less stressed in London, which you can imagine being in London is quite stressful at times for anyone, let alone a deafblind person. Um, so of course, after that, I had the confidence. I now feel that I can go into London on an independent basis with my guide dog and go and work. Um, so I do get invited to go to London quite a lot, and I've often avoided it for that very reason, and a lot of people do. So a lot of what I've spoken about is actually mainstream technology. Um, I know over the years I was given all kinds of gadgetry throughout um, education for me to try, and I just never get on, I never got on with any of it. So pretty much um, the initial um, outlay always seems so expensive. However, considering what it can bring to an individual long term, it's definitely cost effective. Most deafblind people want to work um, and they want to be an active part of society. However, because they don't have the access to technology or people who are aware of what people need, um, they're, they're not able to do so. So with the right support and tools, I believe that a lot of us can do more. Um, there's actually hor horrifying figures on this Sense website, Sense Massive Deafblind Charity, put a report on their website recently that only 4% of deafblind people are in employment. Um, and that's from between 18 years old to 25. And that's pretty shocking, because um, there's so many of us that are so capable um, but can't do it without the right tools. Uh, so yes, if you did want to have a look at that, that's a link. Um, so we really do have to ask ourselves why this is the case when such enabling technology is available out there. I am pretty you know, lucky. I have a really supportive family who have given me confidence and has enabled me access to assistive technology, along with encouraging me to believe in myself. So it's always been looking for the right solution, as opposed to looking for a reason to stay in bed. Um, don't get me wrong, I've had, I've had my dark days, um, and I do still question myself, because people question me. Um, so a lot of people look at me and they're like, you're fine, you don't need the help, when actually I do. Um, I just need some patience and understanding. There's definitely a lot to be done for people like myself, and the reason I regularly speak about the importance of awareness, technology, and accessibility. I do this through my charity and in my work. So I, me and my family set up the Molly Watch Trust back in 2010, uh, really to support people like myself, because there wasn't a lot of help for people like me. Um, and it was really, the main aim was to raise awareness of Ulster Syndrome, because no one really knows about it. Um, and also just to raise the awareness of what we can do, opposed to what we can't do. Um, you know, the ability 
as much as disability. We also advise on a useful assistive technology to fundraise, and we fundraise for such equipment on a project-to-project -project basis. So we're only small, um, but we have managed to fund many Kindles uh, for people to enable reading again. Um, and also the Apple Watches, we've managed to fund um, 16 of these, um, and that's still something that we're, we're working on. And there's a few projects that we have that we're hoping to, to launch pretty soon. And the, and the last thing, really, to get people living with us syndrome or someone, family members, friends, just bring them together. Um, so a lot of us feel alone, and we like to prevent that by, by just saying, you know, you, you are not alone, we are here. Um, so that's really what we do at the Mollywood Trust. And then for me, on an independent basis, um, I recently set up my own company um, back in May, so it's very new, um, but I'm basically a technology and website accessibility and usability consultant um, at Mollywatt Limited. I'm also a keynote speaker, and I'm a published author, illustrator of two children's books. These books are anti-bullying with the message of it's okay to be different. Now, these books basically reflect my experiences in school of being excluded because of my condition. I've been into lots of schools and I've spoken about this, talking about hidden disabilities and inclusion, and also the talk of technology, of course, of how that can really make a difference in a classroom. I'm also an ambassador um, of Mollywood Trust, Sense, DeafBlind Charity, and GN Hearing, who are the ones that made the, these hearing aids. Um, so if, they, if you did want to know about my availability, if you wanted to see me again, um, please do go to my website, mollywatt.com, um, or contact at mollywatt.com for any inquiries. Thank you.